Yeah, many thanks. Many thanks to the people still present in the room. I think it's, it's not just because of reception this evening, but also because of the topic. I, I, just, I just see that I did not mention radar in the title, but it has already been added meanwhile. So it's a, it's a project in terms of radar climatology, and I would like to refer to my co-authors. These are my pro this is my project team, uh, who make the biggest part of the work. We already mentioned visibility and visualization of extreme events. In our work, is about the visibility of extreme events in themselves. And a good example is the 28th of July 2014 event in Münster. Maybe you say it's a um, like of a fun event for some people. As shown in the picture, you see the Regni, the Regni uh, process, ground measuring stations in the region of Münster. This is the city area of Münster, that, as we, uh, can be seen. This is an example for having rain falls that cannot be actually captured by measuring stations, ground level measuring stations, but with radar we have the opportunity to see more of the intensity of the event. This is the Radulan. Uh, online yeah, process. I'm going. This is the climato climatological approach. And in addition, that we have ground level data in addition to the radar data. This is the foundation of Lanov. I think about 300 millimeter per day were measured at the occasion of this extreme rainfall, this torrential rain. What's the reason, what are the reasons for this project? NGOs uh, and um, disaster response organizations actually show that there's an increasing number of interventions. On the other hand, there is a general change in precipitation characteristics, and we are looking for a method in uh, allowing us to reflect this in our findings. Radar is one of it. The capture and analysis of locally limited heavy rainfalls is a tricky thing. Uh, but when using classical ground level measuring data, and that is why we have the radar climate project starting in 2001 for the evaluation of quantitative data, area based, high resolution and which is to be continued also in the future. Within the scope of the climate change, we see a higher frequency of extreme rainfalls, and this requires adaptation measures. And our interest is to work together with users and to suggest and recommend far-reaching adaptive measures, especially in urban, densely populated areas and there we need high resolution data. I'd like to introduce the project in general and then to give you examples of results we actually obtain and produce and intend to produce in the end of the project. So statistical evaluations, derived products, and event-based evaluations. This is a kind of uh, an outlook for the future. As to the Radolan uh, approach, uh, Mr. Becker already be, uh, gave first explanations this morning. We have the online adjustment process. We have 17 C-band Doppler radar sites in Germany, and we have the, the uh, partner German states delivering real-time data, which are then adjusted, calibrated with the radar findings. 
Stationen, die uns da automatisch... So, 1200 automatic stations deliver results. This is a co-work project, operational, has been operational since June 2005. It's a combination out, uh, on the basis of the punctual values measured in local sites in correlation with uh, area coverage precipitation captures of the radar network. The data is used for flood risk management and flood prevention, flood control within the scope of the Anaclimate Radar Climate Project. This is the this is a project of the strategic alliance of authorities. We have five partners, the German Weather Service, the Disaster Aid, the Technical Hilfswerk, the Technical Support Agency, and, and the Urban and Town Planning Research Institute. This project started on the 1st of June 2014 and is scheduled and the 31st of August 2016, and we are currently evaluating and preparing the radar data. We carry out the complete the full reanalysis starting in 2001. I'm going to go into detail of certain items, the use of additional data sources, then extreme value statistical evaluation is carried out, and we have a user advice module for project accompanying communication with users in order to collect the needs actually existing and case studies are carried out. First of all, I'd like to refer to the additional data sources. You can see on the right hand side the availability of the so called adjustment stations. Blue is the color of the online adjustment measuring network stations. And the green color are daily value stations, which do not use the online process, but which deliver further data. So this is a huge amount of data available to us. And you see in the beginning, there were just 150 stations in the beginning. But meanwhile, it's a huge wealth. So, And of course, it's also a question of the quality of the databases. The daily data are uh, integrated uh, with the help of an integration process. We have an hourly value coming from the stations, and we have the radar stations. It's a total of an, an hour. Every five minutes, is, uh, one measurement is made every five minutes, and then we come to a synthetic uh, time distribution of precipitation according to the ground level measuring data in order to come to an adjustment and kind of calibration. South of Bavaria, you see the number of stations, you see interpolation artifacts, the high density of data available for reanalysis purposes. This is a zoom as shown here in the four Alps, you see. You see you see the results, and because of the heights and the altitudes there, the radar is oriented towards higher altitudes, which gives a certain uh, effect. Additional uh, correction methods are developed for the system. For example, a spokes correction. This is the local radar product for the city of Hamburg, it aggregated over several years. So the radars were placed in the cities, and there are a lot of tall buildings give it, providing shadowing, shading effects, and all this clutter effect. Is, uh, or this clutter is processed via uh, method, as you can see here now. The azimuth is used, the aggregate of the precipitation amounts, and you see the spokes which form in the radar chart, in the radar picture. 
also eine envelope funktion im prinzip we use an envelope Daten function over these over this so database aus. and das the result is this so the spokes you can see on top have been corrected and eliminated. The second point is the distance correction. As already said, long distances do not allow the intensity to be measured. You see a reduction in intensity. These clutter pixels are disturbances, eco disturbances. You see, especially in the Ore Mountains here in this region, you have to look toward the top during the precipitation scan. We measure at various elevations following the topographic uh, nature. Uh, we have various azimuth winkles used in the south. You can see there we have a steeper angle. And we actually reach rather high altitude elevations in radar. But also there we have <coughs> a correction method. And you see over, over the height of the beam, distance, which means also distance from the radar system. We have the totals of the precipitation amounts shown by those pixels. And over 14 years, we would like to expect the homogeneous distribution. Then we, then we will have a more homogeneous picture in the Ore Mountains and in the giant mountains in Poland and Czech Republic. We see these flattened out results. A kind of disappointment for you and for me also that the corrections have not yet been integrated into the final results. That's why the pictures as shown here with the spokes. So far for the correction procedures, now as to the statistical evaluations, uh, average seasonal precipitation in Saxony by season, Spring, summer, autumn, winter, you see the clear higher amounts of precipitation during summer. You see the focus of precipitation this year in winter time in the western part. You also see the spoke effects from the radar, which will be eliminated, hopefully, in the next edition. Higher resolution. Higher amounts of precipitation, these are interim results as desired by the users, by the customers. Here you see very dry uh, year 2003 and uh, more humid years like 2013, for example. Let's come to the extreme value statistical evaluation. This also has already been mentioned also during today. Frank mentioned this very briefly. Costra, you may have heard about that. This statistical evaluation on the basis of the station data called Costra station base. We need to automate this for evaluation uh, for recurrences and duration levels. Then the 30 highest ranking uh, totals uh, are used, uh, outliers are uh, processed as well. One outlier was selected here. Maybe another method would be better. One would need to discuss whether more than one outlier should be used for evaluation. Then we have a one kilometer pixel. Mr. Becker showed it already this morning. So uh, this is a uh, duration level of one, uh, one year and one hour. 
a recurrence of one year and duration of one hour. This is the ground measuring network between 1951 to 2000 and the radar climatology from 2001 to 2015. Shorter time series but higher resolution. You see precipitation distribution and also we saw the same picture in the trend shown in previous contribution and it can also be seen in the ground stations now for 20 years and now the picture is more heterogeneous as you can see as to the and this is due to the better capture of extreme events by radar and, uh, and these individual events have a strong impact on the radar picture. We do not wish to uh, substitute that for COSTRA, to replace COSTRA. We are now a, res we are meanwhile a research project, and it's just about reanalysis of the radar data in order to come to first findings and first conclusions. So we have a similar large-scale distribution of hotspots for smaller recurrences, and, uh, but the picture for larger recurrences is different. This is what is uh, being wished due to the databases. Radar based gives provi uh, evaluation provides more details. But in the long run, the radar data deliver a, a valuable basis for statistical evaluation. And of course, we want to draw comparisons between ground measuring stations and radar data. Let's come to the derived products within the scope of the user advice module. So we have development of custom products, GISP based, grid based, and uh, case studies. We have different users from five sectors or five uh, areas. We have civil protection, and there we get uh, also money from the st strategic authorities, that means fire departments, risk mapping. We have insurances, country planning, uh, town city country planning, agriculture, and uh, hy hydrology, water resources management as a main stakeholders. By way of an example, let's have a look at the civil protection. We have heavy rain for torrential rain in Hamburg in 2014. So uh, fire department data. We have the total amounts of precipitation from 16, from uh, 4, uh, 50 p.m. to 8.50 p.m. And maybe it can be coupled to hydrological models. This is just a brief example of how we wish to uh, do this and how we will do this. As to agriculture, there is about erosion monitoring. We use the R factor, the rain for erosivity. Uh, on the basis of the data captured, classical way using the annual totals of precipitation delivered from the uh, ground level measuring stations, but with the radar data we have much more opportunities, higher resolutions, and on that basis we can actually, and as a basis we can use the event erosivity of each of the events. We use the adjusted uh, hourly aggregate and uh, we call it quasi-adjusted uh, based on the five-minute measured values. And, and as to the R factor, this uh, erosivity factor, there are various contributors, uh, Ms. Mrs. Fischer in Bavaria, Mrs. Kuhnert in Saxony in Freiburg, I think, in collaboration with the German Weather Service and Mrs. And Mrs. Poisner in uh, Hanover in Hesha. I'd like to give you an example on the basis of the hourly aggregates. 
der linken Seite noch mal die Referenz. On the left hand side you have the reference values. On the right hand side you have the rain for erosivity, rain factor between 2001 and 2015. Average values, you see the rough structures, the core structures are the same. It's not so marked in terms of maxima in the uplands. Also in the Black Forest we have uh, more detailed data. And we also have orographic uh, basis. On the right hand side, this is a year, 2014, I think. I can read it in the, for the moment here. We see that the R factor of one for one year is highly heterogeneous on the basis of the high resolution radar data. When zoomed into the picture, there's a Saxony, the average R factor. Again, you see the spoke of the radar data. There we have a highly resolved information regarding the R factor. No outliers included for the moment. But the, in, but the recurrences of the individual <coughs> peaks should also be uh, integrated. The difference between winter and summer. I'd like now to get a bit away and come to the hail climatology. Thomas Sohenel just published his paper in uh, the a relevant journal, in technical journal, but I would, because time is short, I would not go into detail, but radar data were combined with various observ observations from the European database and from the hail insurance data and from the main stations of the German weather service. You see the annual curve, a maximum in summer, especially in May, observed by the German weather service. Later f um, uh, observation, probably due to the crop rotation and the damage caused to rotating crops. We do not know where the difference comes from. This is the result. Same pictures appear in the paper that has been published. You have the reported data on the right hand side combina in combination with the radar data. And when looking into Saxony, you see the real-time database, but we wish to continue this uh, by using the radar data. But please, uh, I would like to refer you to the paper that has been published. F to conclude, uh, Events-based evaluations, the big advantage of radar data is that we are not punctual in terms of capturing the data, the rain data, precipitation data, but we have tracks, we have intensities, we can actually track the events. This is an example. This is the Wiesbaden result, flood of the Hambach Creek. In 2014, uh, this is the total amount of precipitation, the aggregate. Here you see the recurrence intervals, and you can see that the recurrences are so uh, high fluctuation, 50 to 100 years recurrence. There are approaches to cope with it. This is a paper by Professor Schmidt from Kaiserslautern who developed a heavy rainfall index using the traffic light colors as codes in order to give a rough outline of the intensities. What we wish to do is to capture, to fully capture the intensities of weather extremities weather extremes. This, this is the Münster uh, uh, flood, North Rhine-Westphalia as a reference. We use the weather extremity index published by Müller and Kasper in 2014. The equation is the following. The medium logarithmic recurrence interval is determined and multiplied over the area. Across the area, as you can see, over the area you have various curves as duration levels. The weather extremity index is this value, the WEI shows the maximum, so the intensity of an event is the maximum combination of the recurrence interval 
across the area, the actual area, the surface area, and the duration level. And in the end, you can zoom this, you get a characteristic duration for each of the events, a characteristic surface area, square kilometers, and the maximum intensity. This, and the index has a unit that's hard to grasp, but and the question is whether we are able to come to objective conclusions. We used it weather extremity index for Claudia in 2002, shortly before the Elbe flood. There we have a higher extremity index for higher areas and for longer duration. So this WEI can be used for assessing, evaluating, and grasp the intensity of extreme events. When trying to use that uh, in terms of radar climatology, then we have to get from individual events to the grid data. It is important to have a reference area. For individual events, you can define that rather arbitrarily or because you have the knowledge, but for, climatologi for climatological research studies, you have to find a reference area, for, for example, a state, a German state. And the question is whether this WEI classification is suitable for correlating and comparing, objectivating between uh, regions and extreme events in order to come to trends and to determine uh, frequencies of extreme events. This is a master thesis performed by Mrs. Schiller, who actually is currently working on this very subject. In the end, I'd like to present an interim result, the weather extremity index used for all of Germany. You see clear annual curves or annual trends from 2001 to 2015, and you can actually show individual events that are publicly generally known, like Claudia and the Münster event and other peaks. The same was prepared also for Saxony. You see the Elbe flood, an actually high peak. You see supercells, much precipitation at that point in the Ore Mountains. You see the floods in 2010, 2013, 2013, uh, less intense, but it's, we only used the uh, German data. We did not include the uh, data and damage um, occurred in the Czech Republic, for example. This, this data is not included. So this is now the end of my presentation. This is now the outlook for the future future, what we are intend to do or what might be done with the data in the future. I presented you the radar climatology project for optimized data preparation. Typical errors are eliminated from radar results. We quantify uh, the ground level database and we visualize the, uh, this for customers. Radar data deliver short time series because it started in 2001, but, but an annual update is uh, planned to be done, and the longer the time series becomes, I hope not that it will be 100 years, but maybe after 30 years we will be able to make first very conclusive um, or get very conclusive results for the capture of high resolution extreme events and indexes might, should be used for classification events. That seems to be very important for the future. We also used other uh, methods, um, processes. Yeah, und damit komme ich so, and this is the end of my presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Winterrad, for this interesting